Hello, hello, and welcome back to another part of this podcast sort of thingy for me to not think about the army. How long will this go? Hopefully for around 58, but maybe I'll have a mental breakdown at one point and then have a break and then come to it, but only time will tell. Anyway, last week I talked about Kingdom Hearts 3, and you will think I will talk about Final Fantasy 15 again, but you're wrong. I'm going to talk about another series I really I love, I've, I will, yeah, I would say I really love, and that is Professor Layden. A series that for me is really weird for the reasons I like it, because I am not good with those games. I'm really, I, I don't want to say dumb, but I am pretty dumb in a lot of ways. So like, this is a series that really helped me a lot with reading and understanding the English language as a whole. It's not like I said when I started playing the game, my English was absolute shit to say. But it's like, it really helped me understand. Anyway, I would like to go through each of the games from order from where I played it first. So not necessarily from release date. Just the way I played it first. And the first game being P- Pandora's Box, also known as the Diabolical Box in West and the US. Apparently, Professor Layden is usually translated from two different teams when they first, first localized because, like, one of the biggest appeal of Professor Layden is definitely the story and the animated cutscene with voice acting. So I think the localizer or the translation of the game made sure to make it into so many different languages as possible because I know there's a French dub, I know there's a dub, uh, Dutch dub as well, so that's... And like even from other countries that don't have a dub, they usually have the packaging and all in the native language because the way I got Pandora's box will always be weird for me because like back I got it as a kid around 2014. I was only what 12 years old I think or 11. And I was in holiday in Denmark. My mom lives there and sometimes we go during the summertime. It was just me and my sister actually for like four months there during the summer holiday, which was pretty cool. And one day we were just out shopping with my mom's best friend's daughter. I read, shout out to her. She's honestly the coolest person out there. And she took me and my sister out for shopping and we went through a lot of different shops as well. Like I wanted to look at all the video games out there and we went to this weird little electronic store. They had like the smallest section of niche video games out there so like there's nothing here and then there's this lone copy of pandora's box sitting in shell all in danish as well i'm like this seems pretty cool and back then like professor laden interests me like i wanted to play those games but where i'm my home country where i was born at and lived and still am that was my dog and she's dying because of the heat so just avoid that and back to what I was saying, but where I'm from, you can never really get niche kind of games. Not like saying Professor Layden is a niche game, but where I'm from, if it's not FIFA or, or GTA or like the popular Mario game of the year, you are never gonna find a game you like. Lately, it's been easier, but back then it was super duper hard. So seeing it in like the one copy left, I'm like, this is the perfect chance. And it was only like around 250 kuna. I don't know how you translate that to American or dollars to Euro, but it was cheap. So I got it and like, it was super duper hard for me because like, like I said, I am not the smartest person out there. Like this one puzzle that absolutely got me stuck for two days was this stupid ant one where it's like, you have to draw the path that takes the longest. I read it as the shortest path possible. So I'm like, oh, it's that easy. But it's like, it's not, I just read it right, you dumbass. And like there's other puzzles like even with the hints that you have like oh I can just use the hint that can help me a lot. Sometimes it's literally just like think hard about this puzzle or just like it's not that hard. It's like thanks. Thank you for wasting my hint. Anyway, so like I got Pandora's box in and there and it's like I play the game after I play Kirby Triple Deluxe which for me is a game that really helped me video gain a more appreciation to video game and with Professor Layden's story in and music by Tomohito Nishiura, it's like amazing, not amazing, yeah, pretty much amazing. Like each game's story is like over the top, yet has this sense of realism How somehow. Like the, the only game that's a little bit off with that is The Lost Future, and I'll get to that later. But like for Pandora's Box, it was amazing. I love the story, but even though it was weird, 
and like there was a lot of puzzles I genuinely enjoy even those puzzles I got stuck in and I couldn't do for a couple of days once I solved them it was just like the urge of the fault no, what you call that thing like this this sensation the satisfaction of solving it on your own just like made it so worth it even though like the pit cards one the one you give was like so low it's not even a joke especially like the last couple of puzzles where this is massive move the block kind of puzzle there it's just annoying and like everything about pandora box is like definitely a step off from curious village like i've never realized it until i went to the first game afterwards but it's like Everything about it was like, that's how you make a sequel. Anyway, back to like in general about Pandora's Box. What I liked about it, it's definitely the story. Not the most, the music is definitely my favorite aspect of the game. The main theme song and the theme of the Diabolical Box. Like there's the soundtrack that was released. They usually featured three versions of the song, but with live orchestra. And, that were, and they were done by, they're orchestrated by, Norihito Sumitomo and Tetsuya Kuwayama and they like they had like a full blown accordion, drums, everything, bass, guitar, it was like cool and the full sense orchestrated one is just absolutely phenomenal and but the story of the game is always gonna be bangers to me like in the beginning it started up cool like all oh, this box that kills people when you open it sounds very fishy mysterious and then you go to a drop zone and you're like oh this is cool and then you change the cards and then you go to false for the first time and there's this weird cutscene where everyone is shaking up and then you open the door and then it's like this nighttime lights esque thing and it's like what's going on and then you realize when you're in the castle it's like oh yeah everyone is just hard on drugs at the moment like professor Layden and his companion everyone's on drugs it's like what that's just funky and like and um, wife died while giving birth to his granddaughter for me that's the weirdest part like no you can't have his daughter oh damn it I thought I was good at it. I guess I was not. Anyway, back to Anton's weird situation because I always find it weird because it's like, oh, it's not his daughter or his wife, but his granddaughter. Damn it. His granddaughter. For me, it's like, oh, why, what the hell? It's kind of like, oh, hey, Anton, this is not your daughter. This is your granddaughter. Have fun. I apologize for those background noises, but like, oh boy, and I realized that I forgot to close this and there's probably an echo effect going on. Shite. Whoops, back to that. And that was always the weirdest part of the story for me. It didn't make it less good or anything. It's just like, oh, it's not your daughter, it's your granddaughter. The daughter you had with your wife, well, yeah, she's dead. But, like, your granddaughter's alive, you can look into that. But the ending was really sweet with him. Like, oh, I'm gonna see a little bit more just to get to know my granddaughter. It's like, oh, that's just, just too sweet. And the ending theme, like, each game... Except for the first and last game, there were done, the ending themes were done by different people, actually, like popular musician at the time. And for this game, it was, I want to say Iris by Salyu. And it's like, it's a really sweet song, and I like having the localized version of the game. Instead of translating the songs into English or all the other languages, they decided to make an instrumental version of the song. And that just made it so sweet. And the music box version, or like, like the last puzzle of the game, is like, Oh, that's just cute and adorable. Another track that for some reason really got to me was the town's history track. I don't know when I first, damn it. When I first heard that track, it honestly just clicked to me. And, and the main theme song of the game, theme of the Diabolical Box I mentioned before. Like, I remember during that holiday time, I would just go out and my grandmother have trampoline a trampoline and I usually just take my D, my 3DS and go to the sound selection of the game and just put the song and put it down and then lie there because it was it was that good the beginning piano part and then you have the I wanna say mandolin but I'm pretty sure it's just a Spanish guitar. Yeah they just say guitar here and it's like oh that's just good. Don Paul I can never pronounce it now. I wanna say Don Apollo's or Don Paulo I don't know how you pronounce his name. I like his name, but like, oh, I'd rather have another song that was orchestrated, but oh well, I get what I can get. 
And I, in general, for like, even though I did skip the first game because back then I didn't know there was like a series, I thought it was just like random games. Each character felt really cool as well, especially that reveal, like, oh, like Flora? It's actually Don Paul, and I was like, what? That's just weird because Professor Lady managed to have this quirkiness in the story, like the whole everyone was just hallucinating the whole theme, like false sense, get it? It's not false sense, but it's like false in the sense, get it? And it's like, okay, game, you're smart. And there's like different side plot, like they thought like Anton was a Anton was a vampire. That was just cool and stuff. And like this game's cutscene, especially is like God of War. Like in the first game, they look borderline ugly, but in this game, like everything about Pandora's Box is like that's how you make a good sequel. That's how you build upon. So once I actually got into Curious Village later that year, like I remember especially in Christmas time, I asked my parents to get me Curious Village on the Lost Future. And it was sealed copy and everything because like Professor Layden games are actually quite cheap. I don't know about now, but like they sure are. And going to the first game was quite hard because like everything just fell off. It's like even the character portrait is not bad. Professor Layden had this pretty cool art style to them. But like, oh god damn it. And, every, and there's just like cool art style to them, like one makes it really unique. But that can also make it quite aged, especially in the first game where they do like Professor Layden is always in this weird frontal position instead of the side one. It was just weird. It doesn't make it bad. The story is still pretty cool. Like, oh, what's up with this tower? What's up with this mysterious golden apple or something? It's like, it's cool. And and like, like the story is quite simple since it is the first game. But. It was still memorable. My favorite part was definitely the, actually to the cutscene where Flora and Professor Layden are up in the tower and they need to get away from it. Like the music and the scene was just cool. And I and I did love the part where you go out in the night during the song, the song and the veil of night and in the translation version they called it something, the curtains of night, I think. Like there's different localization of the names. It's just like very peaceful, it's just good. And the tower, the climb up was so annoying because most of the puzzles were so hard. But it was still memorable. And another cutscene I really liked was towards the end of the game where you discover the chamber full of gold, I remember. And then you have Flora's father calling out to the victor, like the mystery solver. And then you have Flora shouting out her father, like, where is he? Are you there? Are you okay? It's like, it's heartbreaking. And it actually made me shed a, shed a tear. Like the other game, the first Pandora's Box also made me cry. But in this game, it just made me like, oh, it made me feel so bad for her. But other than that, there really isn't much about Curious Village. It was a good start of the game, but it's like, there was a lot of weird stuff, like literally some of the puzzles were like math equation, like I want cool and interesting puzzle, not math problem game. And... But like, and the cuts in it well, they look off like, oh, what's wrong with Luke's face in the beginning, what the hell? Like, there isn't much to say about it as well, I realize. Except for like the cuts in, I mentioned before, the one with Luke and Flora and the tower trying to escape it. Each game has its own unique theme, like I mentioned before, and they try to play it at the right cut. And I guess in the first two games, they do it quite well. Like in the first game, you had Professor Layden theme playing where they tried to escape the tower. It fit perfectly. And then you have the second game where the diabolical box theme plays while Anton and Layden having this fencing fight. It fits, but later on in the game, like in the series, I guess because they orchestrated the main themes afterwards, that they don't have time to incorporate it with the cutscene very well. Like you still have them in cutscene, but they're like they're played for only like 40 seconds, and then the regular gameplay starts again, and then they play it again for the first 30 seconds again. It's like that's just weird. It's not bad. I love all the main theme, but it's just weird. They could have done it better, in my opinion. And then you have the third game. Professor in the unwound future in America and the lost future everywhere else and like lost future is so much better than unwound future. I don't understand why like Europe, I, I want to say UK I guess they translated the game, the Republic, they did a really good job in translating the games to be frank, better than the American version but I don't think it did match 
different, but that's such a side point. I want future or lost future for me. It's like, it is a good Professor Layton game, but I still like Pandora's box a little bit more for some reason. Lost Future has some story moments that make me go, what the hell, that's just like a little bit too much. Music wise, it's still amazing, I still love it. The orchestrated version, the research facility, and the gigantic weapon they channeled in here. The mobile fortress on there were pretty good, especially the main theme is just, it's good. The ending theme being this weird, what you call it? Oh gosh darn it, friend. Oh yeah, I still use Skype. You think I use Discord? No, I don't like change. I still use Skype. Yay. Like the ending theme for Lost Future is called... Something with time. I forgot last time travel. I think. I don't know. And it's like... And it's like a really cool song. I still like Iris a little bit more, but that's just me. Oh, in the first game, they, it was done by Tomohito Nishura, the ending theme. And it's pretty cool and it's pretty unique. As well, but back to Lost Future. I'm going back and forth in each game, I know that. Also, it has been a while since I played this game. The recent one I played was Pandora's Box. I replayed the game again. But the others, I'm just going through memories because I just, I really like those games and I want to talk about it. But Unbound Future for me just felt a little bit over the top. Like this whole, oh, you're not actually in the future, but you're just in the underground London. It's like, I'm sorry, what? Underground London? Is that it? Can that even be a thing? Like, is that even physically possible? Like, sure, the past game had those moments that's just like, everyone's on drug, this whole village is robots, it's like... But, like, for the London one, it's just weird, and in the end, it's like, the cool twist I did like was definitely the part, like, oh, the time machine actually worked, like... Claire is actually from the past, but she's gonna be sent back to the moment she died, which is absolutely tragic. And that last scene where she said, oh, and our lost future and Layden cries, I'm like, yep, that makes me sad, that made me cry. Not as much as Iris did and Pandora's Bug, but it still made me cry. And who, boy, is it hot in here? Oh yeah, and each game has like three unique mini games. Like in the first game is something I completely forgot. In the second game you had the hamster and the tea set, and in the third game you had this mini card thing and this adorable picture book and then you have a pair. They're all good, they're definitely side things, but they're never that big of a deal. And, but, it's not like it's a lost future is a bad sequel, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like as though it's like, the same thing with Last Spectre as well, I'll get to that last actually because that it was the last Professor Layden game I played. It just didn't feel like a good sequel, it's not, doesn't mean it's bad by anything, there's still something I like Pandora's Box more, maybe it's because it's my nostalgic thing, because I love Pandora's Box, but like, something about it seemed odd. Also there's this weird puzzle block battle thing, they use it twice, the music was really good, but then I like, what came of that? And the cutscenes, like the story, other than those Claire and the thing, they really didn't got to me. Like, oh, this is future. Look, no, it's just you're on low and fall. I don't know, I forgot his act, the real name of it. It was like, oh yeah, he's sad. I guess he did something bad and he's in prison now. And the main villain, the tick. I forgot, like, the prime minister got away, but I was like, oh, I guess that's sad. But still, the future look tried to kill the entirety of London. How innocent can he be? And then you have those moments where they play the main theme again, but like only for 40 seconds, which is dumb. Anyway, after I finish all three, all the original trilogy, the next thing I did, I did take like a sort of break, but then I noticed on my local game store, like electronic store to be honest, to be, to be technical, and I noticed a copy of Azran Legacy, the last game in the series, and I didn't realize it was the last one until I like Google it that day. And then I'm like, oh, I should probably get the one before that, which has been Miracle's Mask for the 3DS. And I'm like, oh wait, is that the right one? But no, it was the Last Spectre. And then I realized, okay, Last Spectre is going to be really hard to get because I can only get it from the internet. And where I'm from, that's quite risque. So I thought like, oh, I'll just get to Mask, Miracle Mask. I can't be that. I, could be, I couldn't be that lost. But it turns out I wasn't. It's like the story. They're already self-contained to a sort of end. Like, you don't need to play the past game to fully understand each character motive or anything. They're quite simple in a sort of sense. Like, you don't need to play Curious Village to understand who Clara was. It's like, it's perfectly explained in its own game, and each game does that pretty well. 
and like the the next trilogy is actually a prequel, which is pretty cool, especially when you play the last Spectre. But like that was the last game I played in the series. Miracle Mass is like it's definitely a sequel, but the thing is the Professor Layton art style is really unique. Like each character has this weird dysmorphic look to them, like giant noses, giant feet and whatever. Like in 3D they tried their best to make it translate well, but I still felt it was a little bit off. Not bad, but it's like weird. Cutscene wise, it's still pretty well. The animated one, which is pretty phenomenal. But sometimes the game tries to have this 3D cutscene going, and like, I'm not, it looks weird to leave it to say the least. Because, like, you have one moment with Luke and Leighton walking around Mountain Door, and there's like, wow, look at all these people, and it's just the two of them. It's like, okay, that's quite a jump. And I like the whole pop-up book they sort of got to it. like you go around and then you tap the screen to go even further that felt like such a pop-up book kind of thing that i really really like i really do enjoy the aesthetic of miracle mass if i had to count all my favorite professor Layton game miracle mass is definitely my second favorite actually the first one being pandora's box obviously like, everything about it i love the carnival aesthetic it's just pretty cool like, the main theme the miracle mass theme it's so cool, I wish it was played better in the game's cuts and like the way they used it, it was like the 20 second where later and put the answer on like a CL or something I don't remember quite well. But it's like, I wish they would play it full like in the other first two games, but like, oh well, it's still orchestrated. But one thing I don't understand, why they never released Miracle's Mass soundtrack. Not even Azure and Legacy got an official soundtrack. It's, it's so weird, it's the last two games in the series and there's no soundtrack? Kind of really disappointed. Especially in Azure and Legacy, where there's like these two renditions of latent theme, like one with the Spanish guitar player and one with really somber tones. So it's like... I, I, I wanted to listen to them without the voices. Come on, game. Come on, level 5. But back to Miracle Mass, like, I liked it. For me, it really screams summer for me because I played the game on summertime. There was like a lot of puzzles I got stuck in again. But overall, I, I don't like to serve the game because it didn't end it like sad or anything. Like, oh, it turns out the one I love is dead, but someone keeps going on or whatever. It's like, it ended really happy. Like, oh, everyone's alive. No one's dead this time. And the main ending theme by Yumi, something or whatever, Mysterious Flower. Oh God, instrumental version with that saxophone. It's like, I thought saxophone was dead, but turns out it wasn't. It's still awesome. And the whole, and the Montador nighttime theme sounds amazing, especially the circuit tent edition when you go inside the circuit tent. It's like, it's played once in the game and it sounds amazing. Another track I really liked was Norwell, which I'm pretty sure captures the whole mysterious aspect of Azure and Legacy where they're being up in this game. It was just cool and going through Professor Layden's younger days with his friends, that was just pretty cool and cute. And this game's mini games, like there's the toy robot one and this rabbit show, and a weird shop mini game or something. I absolutely adore the robot one because I just thought the music was so catchy, and the rabbit one was just adorable. The, the shop, I don't really remember that one. But the whole game just makes me feel happy. I like carnivals, I like circus. So the main aesthetic of the game was that was just cool but it was still sad like oh my god when Layden thought that he killed his friend Randall I was just oh that's just sad and the whole ending part of like what's the hell is Laurel Bailey character in this game I for completely forgot like oh she didn't marry that one guy because they love each other and tried to replace Randall no they did it to save his legacy of Randall and it's like oh that's adorable also another character voiced by Euron Lawful again like, I didn't realize it until other time until I played the re I pre pre replay the game they like oh hey it's Euron Lowenfall <laughs> like he's not a bad actor for anything but he's usually voiced by by different characters and just has the same voice like oh hey it's Euron Lowenfall playing as Euron Lowenfall so having him play the character this time in the British accent, I was like, awesome. The same thing with Lara Bay, but I'm not talking about voice acting in this game. I think it's pretty good, except for Luke's American voice acting. Like, what's up with that? Honestly, the English one is so much better. The UK one is just better. Oh yeah, Descalade, that was a character. I liked him. I love his theme, but like, it felt off. 
especially in Azure and Legacy. I don't know what, but I but one thing I do like about every time they reveal who he is, like, oh, how would we make him change cutscene? Uh, cut some. I just put his mask up and cover his body with the hat, and once it goes up, it changes everything. And I was like, yeah, I like that. That's so late to me. And like, I just really. And the puzzle for this game, I think they captured perfectly. Like later on, I think the the last two games, the 3DS one, I think they captured the puzzles perfectly. Like it's not a math problem, and it's not like really vague, dumb, simple answer kind of puzzle. It's just hit the perfect one. Like even though they're still sliding puzzles, like I can live without those. But like it's a stable in the series. And in the last game in the series. I mean, the trilogy was Azra and Legacy. I'm like, whoa, can you remember the time where literally the entire characters fucking died? That was, that was just mad. And like when I first played the game and I revisited, I'm like, wait, really, did they, did they, are they dead? Like in the cutscene, like they're on the floor, are they really dead? And out of all the Professor Lady, okay, but they do come back to that, so it's not that bad because it is the prequel. It makes no sense if they die and they continue on, but like, it's still weird, man. It just should have been dead. But even though out of all the games, Azure and Legacy sure feels the most. Uh, what you call, what's that word? I just had it in the tip of my tongue. The by the point kind of game is like you go to one area to get the one thing and then you do it again for five times to continue the main plot sort of thing there's a word for it but I completely blanked it out of my head for some reason like you go to Sangrio and then you go to the lake side of Gond or whatever and then you go to Funky and then you go to Toreto what you call it well I can never pronounce it in but except for Hukan <laughs> and then you get one anime cutscene for each town you visit to until you get all of them. Oh, it felt very formulaic, that's the word. It doesn't make it bad, but it was still quite formulaic as a game. Story-wise, the new character, Aurora, like, you, you don't know what happens to her because she's, it is a prequel and you don't see her later on, but I still feel sad when she disappears. Turns out, oh, she's actually a golem, not a human. But it didn't let me smile a bit with the show, like, oh, I can be reborn again as a human being. And I was like, oh, that's adorable. Especially the rendition of Professor Layton theme, which was never released, by the way. Still was off. Also, the scene where the guy, Leon, I think his name is, I keep forgetting, stabs her. That was like, whoa. And the song that plays, which fans stopped the legacy rises. That was just intense all the way through. And then you have the golems destroying your earth, like, you know, whatever. Again, I really do like the game's aesthetic. I just like traveling to the different worlds, seeing how each area is so unique. Like, you got this frozen area, and then you got this nice tropical area, and you got the jungle area. They were just all pretty good, and during the last two games, three games, I want to say, you do have a lot of theme songs repeating themselves, like in this... As on Legacy, you do hear the London Revamp theme stream, like the orchestrated one in the game. That was just pretty cool, and like, if they have to reuse the, reuse the song, I am glad they actually used the orchestrated version, that's just pretty cool. And it's like, it's good, like as for the final part of the Azran for the Professor Leda in Saga, I thought it ended pretty well, and I like how the last cutscene you see them leading up to Kyria's village. I was like, hey, that's getting quite meta of you, game. But it was like, it was cool. I really need to work on my vocabulary on this thing cool five times. Also, another track I really like was Echoes of the Past. I feel like it perfectly captures this theme of it. Especially when it played in the last moment of Azeron Legacy main theme. That was just pretty cool. Even though, again, they played it like they play the main theme weirdly like the first 30 seconds of it and then that's it like we can never hear the theme full or like the main part of the theme it's like nope only 30 seconds that's a done deal okay game thanks and the ending theme truly tomorrow done by domohito and Ishiro, like in the first game but with but arranged by some woman i completely completely forgot the name because i ne never actually heard the original version only the instrumental one and all, all i can say is wow a song never made me cry that much. And that's a lie and everyone knows that. I cry a lot apparently. And like, also in this game's mini games, they're, I felt they were like the most boring one in this series so far. They're not bad, but like, ah, I've seen it better. But again, back to Surrey Tomorrow, it's like, yeah, that's a good scene that makes me cry. 
And like also in Eternal Diva as well, like the movie for the series, like I said, plays during the prequels. I thought it added to Azra and Legacy pretty well because I do mention that movie as well. And I just like the whole fact that they were building up to the whole Azra and Legacy aspect of it. I, except for the last Spectre that they didn't mention. I don't I think they mentioned it a little bit by Descalay. But not by much. And I do want to say that the last two games were fully orchestrated. But other than the main thing, I can't be sure. I really need some confirmation of that. Again, the puzzles were pretty cool. I still, yeah, actually out of all the games, I do think Azure and Legacy has my favorite puzzles overall. Like most of them were fun. Especially the one where you need to get the hero to get the key and then his sword. I just really like the puzzle and I replay it over and over again because I can never get the, I can never do the same path twice. I'm just that bad or that good of a game apparently. <laughs> also, I'm sorry if I'm clipping. I'm using my mic differently this time. And the last Professor Layton game I played that I finished is the last Spectre, which I finally got around to it this year actually. Like I took like a three years break of the series and then I decided, oh yeah, I should probably play the last game of the series. <laughs> and like, for the last game for the DS, they really pushed it to the limits, not by much mind you, but like a lot of the cutscenes just look pretty well and I'm like, can we have an HD port of this game so the cutscene can look good and we don't have those really bad pixelated ones? Can we? Can we not? But like for the first game, and they also introduced look how Luke and Layden met with his new companion, acquaint, acquaint, companion Emmy. It was pretty cool. I like Emmy as a character. I feel like Azra and Lexi kind of made her weird. Like, oh, I wish we could see more of her, but I guess she has to disappear somehow because she never appears in the original series, in the original trilogy. So you get her there. But I just really like the story was sweet, especially the ending part of like, oh hey, I actually got to the, I did the last puzzle. Okay, I didn't do the last puzzle, I cheated because I wanted to know the story because the story really do grab a hold of you. Just like, what's the twist? What's the twist? I want to know the twist. Each game has that. Even though like in Miracle Mask, it was pretty obvious that the masked gentleman was actually Randall, but anywho. In this game, it was like, oh, I did the final puzzle and I haven't cried. That's awesome. And then you touch Lushu, the big ass, I want to say dolphin, like this dinosaur, whatever thing. And then she starts crying. She has that adorable voice. And then she dies. Like, oh my god, her death was like, well, I thought I could cry. I couldn't. I could survive not crying in a Professor Layton game. I was just wrong, completely in the wrong on that part. It was like the whole and the girl I completely forgot her name looks sort of mandatory girl movie kind of thing I completely forgot her name and I just played the games recently I don't know I don't know what's wrong with me her and her like her brother they're like oh Lush don't do that and then it's like oh that's just sad I didn't discover the secret spring the golden garden I was like, oh, that's just so sweet and then you have it die and I was like, oh Lush you know I'm like, oh boy Especially its theme, it's just like, why do you make me cry game? And then you have a little, like each ending has this really cool like illustration to show what happens afterwards. That's what I call creative and adorable. Each game has them and they're all amazing. And in this game they show they erected a statue for Lucio. That's just like, oh, I'm crying. Also the game's puzzle theme, they just call it more puzzles and the orchestrated version was amazing. I still like Miracle's Mask and Azra and Legacy, I think those, those two are the best puzzle themes in the game and I'm not gonna even, there's no discussion in, in that that it's true. And that's just facts and we all know it. But Last Spectre also has a really good puzzle theme, especially the orchestrated version. The game's theme, the Last Spectre theme, or what, like... I forget, Last Spectre is what you call in the US, USA and the, La and the Spectre's Call is what you call the UK version. It's just really cool. I like it, but again, they, they played it weirdly, like they played the 40 seconds of it and then again for another cutscene and that's it. Like, never the full version, it's weird, but like, still a good theme, You're amazing. Also, the orchestrated Escalade theme made it so much better, especially the final battle orchestrated version is just so cool. I do like the final bot battle, like, oh, it's all puzzles, you need to defeat each leg to get it. That was just cool. And the game's area, like, mm, let me just, Mr. Mr. Larry? Mis Mr. Larry. Mr. 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 Larry. Like, I don't know how to pronounce UK names. Give me some slag, okay? 
That theme, like the first town part of the town, town theme, that's actually one of my favorite town themes, like music as a play. It's like, it's not catchy in the sort of, oh yeah, I can bump my head too, but it's like, it really just grabs to me and I like exploring the whole area. I like the whole Canal Water series, that's why I really like Alticia and Final Fantasy XV. I just really liked it. Other than that, the game is like Lost Future for me. It's like, didn't really feel like it did a lot to the series to make it go further, which isn't a bad thing, mind you. I'm okay with the game not doing much to change up. It's like, I'm okay with that because the story and music are always different. That it makes it worth it for me. The games, mini games, I actually never bothered to do this time around because I didn't feel like the part there was this fishing one and then there was this toy train and then this creepy ass puppet one. I want to get around to it, but like, I don't have time, people. <laughs> and the whole, and the ending part, like, with Dosha as a cry, like, and the last, the ending theme, I want to say, how should, what's it called? Because it's this weird, Pex, Pexaventi, I want to say, I'm not sure. It's a weird name, it was, it was done by, Yuko Andos for, for her ninth single actually. I just saw it right now. So that was a good theme I remember. Actually I think it sounded weird the instrumental version. I don't know why. But I liked it. And as for the first game for this new song for the new trilogy, I thought it was okay. Miracle Madison has on because I still think it's a better game than Last Spectre, but like it's for the 3DS and one was for the DS. There's obviously an yeah, upgrade to that. And but after Azure and Legacy, the main puzzle guy I wanna say sadly died. I, that kind of sucked. Let me just get his name right. Wait, what's his name? I can oh yeah, there you go. No, no, let me just Give me a sec, let me just be right on this one. Akira Dango was his name, and like he, he sadly passed away four years ago. So like, after that, it's like, where could Professor Layden go? Because he was usually in charge of the game's puzzle. So it's like, where can he go after that? There were some mobile games, by some, I mean the one with, it's called Layden Mystery Room or something, I forget. Like it wasn't bad, but it was definitely not, Good, I want to say, like, Layden Brothers Mystery Room. I thought this, the story was good or something, but I don't remember. <laughs> there was also this Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney crossover. I love the music in that game, but I haven't played it to see what's good about it. So it's like, where could the games go? So the next, so when Layden Mystery Journey, Cat Trail and the Mil Mil Millionaire's Conspiracy came out, it was announced, I was like, huh. Layden adopted another child. Again. Good for him. So it's like, where could it go? And it's like, and I haven't played it when it was first released, I think on mobiles and then on and then on the and then on the 3DS and then it was remastered for the Nintendo Switch. I got the Nintendo Switch version, like I went to my local game store and I'm like, oh hey, here's this game and I bought it. And it's like, you can tell the puzzles are different, not bad by any means, but it's like you, there's a difference and like but I will come with the game on what thing is like I like how the fact the story isn't over the top like another game is like it, it, it's it's split into episodic placing and it feels like as though it makes it unique because so it isn't like a big overall mystery that needs to be solved which is one of the appeals of the original game so get me start don't get me wrong but it was cool to see like lesser mystery not some big like everyone's a everyone's on drugs or like this whole town is full of robots or there's like a secret underground London or there's a dinosaur out there or miracles or whatever so it's cool to see like this regular kind of cliche -ish story which isn't a bad thing I do think Catrell is a good character on her own she's pretty fun to read especially that dog he's like made me he's so his dialogue just made me laugh like the part the way he said like shoot me now or tell me it's the first of april like i stole that line how many times because it's that cool but sadly i haven't beaten the game i think i went to episode five and i sort of dropped the game for some reason i don't know why it wasn't bad or anything but it's like there was something about it i still liked it it's everything i love about professor late like the music while there is a lot of remixes i noticed I still really liked it, but like, 
And it really makes me hope that maybe we can get a new Professor Layton game or maybe like a cool remaster, like a re remake of it for the Switch or something. But like only time will tell what the next game will be so far. Like there could be another game about Professor Layton during his, like Catrail also had her own, like it had its own anime that seems to be getting a dub soon, I want to say, but I can't be sure because nothing so far has said about English version of the anime so far. But it seems interesting. And hopefully that gets a fucking soundtrack release so we can have all the other tracks, but only time will tell yet again. And maybe hopefully for the rest of the game, but so far this series is left on a weird place right now. It's like, it could go any other way. Like, the free original trilogy did got re-releases for the mobile phone, like for the iPhones, whatever, like smartphones, I mean, I need to say. Which is pretty cool because I actually recently got the Pandora's Box HD version and it's like really fun looking at the game because like Wow, the DS really made the game look absolutely ugly because wow, it looks pretty cool, especially the cutscenes. And like, what I love about Professor Layden 2, it's definitely the music and its character. It's just so fun looking at Layden and look, going around, talking and especially those interactive where you get when exploring the environment when you tap the screen or something, it's just adorable and it made me laugh out at a point, especially in Miracles Mass. There was just some funny dialogues in this game, on the, in that game. And it's like, it really helped me a lot as a child, especially with the music. It, like Kirby Triple Deluxe cemented the fact that video games can be so much more, especially with the music. And Professor Layden just takes a gun and helps it even more. And it's making me love the series and like, make me love music in general. And it's like, there is, and I really, really love this series and I really want to know where it goes next. I really want to go back and finish Catch Rail and the Millionaire's Conspiracy, but like, it makes me curious to see where it goes. Is it another game with Professor Layden? Maybe where in the anime they actually show Layden as an old guy and Luke is married to a woman that's not the one from Last Spectre and my laptop is going crazy. So, like, yeah, and for me, Professor Layton will always be these weirdest games I've ever played because, like, other than Prof Oh, wait, that's a lie because I really enjoyed Pit Cross, and now, and now I'm like, it may not look like it, but I'm actually a 17-year-old woman trapped inside of a tea of a young man's body because, like, well, what are you doing in your spare time? I like playing Sudoku and drinking nice black coffee. It's like, oh, yeah, that's something. I don't like tea funnily at all. I don't like warm water that tastes like peaches. Anyway... Thank you for listening for this week's podcast. I hope I can hear you again next week. Other than that Skype messages, I think I did pretty well this time. I changed the setting on the mic. I'm gonna pat myself in the back. Yep, I do stroke my ego that hard.